morning. Welcome back out to the shop. I know it's been a while, but um, life has been really super busy, so you know we do what we can. Um, we're finally gonna start on the gantry crane. Um, we have this about six foot piece of uh, S-beam that was left over from the jib crane build, and I think we're gonna use it to make a short gantry crane. And this will sit perpendicular to the bed of the uh, Sydney lathe here. The overall, the widest part of the lathe is right at four feet. So it'll easily go up and down the whole way of the, or the whole length of the bed here, which is about, I don't know, it's six foot. So, you know, it's probably eight or 10 feet altogether. Um, but I wanted to use this so we'd get more weight right over the center and it would allow us to slide it off the end of it, pick it up and whatever we needed to do. And we'll probably just leave it parked towards the end down there where the desk is at. But um, I also have a 20 foot beam that's in the uh, other shop that when I bought this S-beam, I went ahead and paid for the, for the whole 40 foot of it. And um, yeah, I don't think you can ever have enough I-beam. So we just, we just brought it all to the shop. The uh, jib cranes worked out phenomenally. Other than the retractor, I put too much tension on the retractor, so it's always wanting to pull back towards the wall. So other than that, um, this one, I'm, we'll, we'll put a manual chain hoist on it, unless I can find a pretty, a pretty um, small moving electric one. You know, I definitely don't want the electric one from Harbor Freight. It just is too erratic up and down. It works fine dropping stuff into the parts washer, but I don't want it here or when you're trying to line up parts in the chuck or if you're trying to line up um, putting this thing back together. So I'm out of room on my table. I can't do anything else. Uh, all the parts are just sitting there ready to go back on this table or on this lathe. So we need to get that done. Um, so we're going to start on this. I have a few limitations though. I only have an eight foot ceiling height, so we're going to measure that out exactly. And then we're going to use the user parameter settings in Fusion 360 to help us design the weight load we want for it. So we want to try to maximize the weight load, but I want to, I want to make this one um, definitely as light as I can, but be able to do the job we want it to do. So to do that, I'll set parameters for all the shapes that I want to want to use. So as we're drawing it, we'll use those user parameters. So if we want to make changes to the design, all we have to do is change the user parameters It automatically re reflect in the design. And then we can do the uh, simulation study to get to make sure we do our weight capacities. So that's the plans. So I'm going to sit here, get my measurements for this, get the measurements for the surrounding area, the ceiling height. Um, I have my casters. Um, they're just some inexpensive ones I found on Amazon, probably I think they were rated for 400 pounds. So, you know, we're, we're going to have to limit the design to the weight of the casters anyway, or change the casters. But I was waiting on them so I could calculate those into my ceiling heights. I'll probably just draw boxes, the height of the, uh, the casters to allow for the parametric design to work with the height. So I'm going to get these measurements and then we're going to go inside on the big computer and we'll start drawing it. So we'll see you back here and well, we'll see you in just a few minutes. All right, we made it back into the house. Um, this is our, our home office. Me and my wife share a home office, and this is my computer setup. It's where I do most of my video editing or all my video editing. Um, also, some live streaming. It's um, just I spent a lot of time here. But um, we're going to – I'm going to show you mostly about the user parameters that how to set them up. So let me switch over to the center monitor here. So this is my Fusion 360 screen. We'll go ahead and open up the design right quick. So in Gantry Crane. And let that load. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit Shift N. So we can get the colors to change. And it just shows each component in a different color. It's just an easy way to visually look at it. And this is what we come up with. This is a design after talking with my brother, what we decided to do. And there again, we're going to use the user parameter settings to dictate the size of the steel. And when I'm talking about the steel, you know, the S4 beam is already set so that we can't really manipulate that at all. But we can manipulate the size of all this tubing that does for all the supports and the base plates that hold the casters. So what I did, I'm going to open up the user parameters. And the user parameters allows you to use um, 
expressions or values for the expressions of what you actually want to call something. So you would use the name as the description of the dimension that you want to use, and the expression would be the value that is applied to that expression or the name. So in this case, you know, I have caster width and caster length and caster height, and this is all set mainly so I can keep the the 96 inch limit that I have from for my overall height. I can't go over 96 inches. And then I have tube thickness, tube size, the overall width, the overall length, and that's so you can change um, the size of the gantry crane if you want to based on, you know, however wide you want to make it or if we need to make it wider and the, the length if you want to make it longer. And this more is so you can do uh, um, the simulations, which will be farther on or maybe the next um, video I'll do. So then, you know, I have beam brace and everything. I'll show you how we use these, though. So let me go back here at the very beginning and we'll move up a step. We'll, we'll do the base plates. I'm going to turn on the sketches. So what I did when I first started out was I just made a rectangle. So let me go to the front and then let me just go to the top here. There we go. I just made a top uh, a rectangle. I just drew a rectangle and then I knew I wanted these base plates in that location. But what I did, so let me edit it here. You can see I defined all the measurements on this sketch. So my rectangle is basically my overall width and my overall length. The 70 inches is from the beam that I have. Um, I ha you know, also have the 20 foot beam left, but I'm, I only want to use the, the, uh, the 70 inch piece that I have left over. So then all these dimensions are basically defined here in this drawing. And if you hover over, it says two and a half, but if you hover over it, it says caster width. So this, pretty much dictates the, the size of the caster, the base plate that mounts to the bottom of it. It's two and a half inches wide by three and five eighths inches long. The caster itself is six inches, and we use that as part of the formula when we do those uprights. But this is how I started. So I have this done, and then when I got done with this, the next thing I did was, oops, let me stop the sketch. I extruded, huh, went all the way to the beginning. Let's do that again. Here we go. I extruded the thickness. So if I edit this, you'll see that the distance over here on the right is says base plate thickness. So if I change the base plate thickness here to base plate thick, just say, just watch this one down here. So if I wanted to change, say I, I, I had three quarter inch thick metal, you see how it raises up. Or if I, or if I had quarter inch metal, I just put quarter inch. But I, I had half inch because that's what I have in the shop. So I was going to use it. But anyway, that's how that that's how those, those, those expressions work. And then you just keep on drawing each component. So if, um, until you get, you know, there's one of the horizontal supports. And we just keep on drawing it and, until you get to the very end. It's very, you know, very simple to use. Fusion 360, I mean, for free software, I, I, I haven't found anything. I've been using AutoCAD for years but I haven't found anything that does 3D as simple as, as Fusion 360 does. A lot of people use SolidWorks, and I never caught on to it. But once Fusion 360 came out, it was very intuitive, and um, it you know I, I picked up on it very quickly. So, But <clears throat> let's go ahead, and I'll, the main reason for this video is using the user expressions. So raise this up just a hair so you can see. So right now we have quarter-inch wall, three inch tubing is what that size is. But say we don't need that after we do run the simulation, we just want to, I want to use the, the lightest gauge metal that I can, that'll pass what I want to lift in the middle, which we're shooting for, you know, I'm going to say between three and 500 pounds. So we'll do the study and we'll probably set it at 500 pounds first. And then if, you know, I only need about 300 is probably going to be fine. This is more for just moving around the shop for little things and not for heavy weights. If we do that, we'll probably build something much larger and it, and it'd be right over the, uh, um, the lathe. So we'll, we're, this is mainly just for reassembling of the lathe and any other light stuff that we may do. And, and to get truly to get rid of this, um, 70 inch piece of I-beam that I have left over. So, um, say the study comes back and we're way over, we're way over and say, well, this is quarter inch, three inch. So what, what about if we want to use eighth inch, two inch? So we just 
hit those two buttons and it's done. The whole design changes and then we can rerun the study. So you seen down here how the, the size of all the tubing changed. So, you know, we're going to start out with three quarter wall is what we're going to start out with. And that's how that works. And it just automatically changes the design. And if you go into the, if you change from the design and, or you want to make a drawing, um, it'll change all that stuff for you. So any of the drawings, if you had CAD cam in here, anything like that, you would just have to rerun those, uh, um, what do you call it? The setups. And it would automatically give you all the new parameters. So it's very, very nice. And if you think about it beforehand, it's very easy to set up. If you want to set the height, you know, we set a maximum height of 96 inches and that's from the casters to the very, very tip top. If it's any taller than that, it might hit the lights. You know, I have a couple inches clearance, but you know, with a weight, concrete is never flat. So it's always wavy. So you want to make sure, um, you know, that you, I'm, I'm want to make sure I don't hit nothing at the top. So the measurement I have is 96 from the bottom of the casters way down here to the very tip top of here. And again, we can look at that. The overall height is 96 inches. So if I go to my, my beam here, I'm sorry, my, uh, uprights. And if we turn on that sketch and we go to edit the sketch. So here's my uprights my measurement for, for that and they're drawn on the top thing but when we extrude it so let me go to the next step oops stop sketch where was that at right in here somewhere about right there yeah so when we extrude that we'll edit this feature ah not that we want to edit this the profile sorry about that we want to edit the feature it's the overall height minus the base plate thickness minus the uh tube size and then minus the caster height and that'll get us the total height right here and that's exactly what we need so we can do that again i'll highlight this it's overall height minus the tube size minus the tube size so overall height was 96 and then we take off for this tube right here which is whatever that user parameter is set right now it's set at three and then it's minus the base plate height thickness which is half an inch minus the caster height, which is six inch. So that takes all those measurements into account. So you won't go over, you won't go over that size. And to demonstrate, I'll show you how it doesn't change. So let me go back here and turn everything back on. So um, this is an easy way to make it look. So you can see the base plate. Let me turn off this sketch here. So there's the gantry crane. And let's just say, um, Oh shoot, we'll make the space plate thickness like 30 inches. That way you'll really tell. Let me move this off to the side. And we'll change that to 30 inches. You see how the base plate thickness, oh. <laughs> that's funny how that worked. Huh. We'll have to definitely fix that. <laughs> so there must not have been a joint involved here, or there was a joint. And it should have followed that. Everything should have went up. But either way, you get the point. <laughs> that was funny. I'll fix that for sure in the drawing. But that's basically the how we um, came out with all the user parameters, using the user parameters to drive all the measurements for this. So, you know, it's going to be very easy to um, change when we do the simulations. One more thing, the last thing I have to do, though, is I need to create a split face up here on this lower, lower section of the flange right here where all the weight's going to go so we can do the study. So we'll do that right now. So, all right, so here we are. We need to construct the midplane. So I'm going to create the midplane. I want it in the middle of this piece right here. So we're going to activate the top beam component. So we're drawing on that. We're going to construct a plane between here. Oop, not an offset plane. We need a midplane. My my apologies. Click the wrong button. Midplane. That's better. We're going to do it between this face and this face. So there we have a plane right in the middle so now we need to offset this plane four inches the size of the the trolley that runs on that tr um, um, track is eight inches so there's eight inches bearing in between there so we need to create an offset plane and we need to select this plane and we're going to go this way four inches that was lucky and we're going to do another one minus four inches which is here 
So now we have our two offset planes. So if you look at the look at it, we need to split this face right here on the bottom of that part right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify and create a split face here. And it's asking us the spe the faces to split. So we want that face and we want kind of hard to see this face right here. That's where the trolley rides. So then it's asking us what, how do we want to split it? So we want to split it using, whoops, we need to select it, this plane and this plane. So it's kind of hard to see, but what we did, we split that face on those two planes. And once you're done, you just hit okay and we're good to go. So if you look here, you can tell, let me turn off all my construction stuff here. Um, construction. You can see we have a plane here and a plane here, and that's where the trolley wheels ride on those planes. So when we do the study, we'll be able to use those as where we want to concentrate the weight at. So that's what we're going to do. So I think we'll call it quits for that vi this video. I don't want to make them too long. Um, I get bored after about 20 minutes, and this is kind of boring, but it's kind of interesting. So I think we'll stop it right here, and um, we'll, I reckon, We'll stop this video, and the next time you'll come by, we'll do the simulation on it. So hopefully, hopefully, with this design, we'll get at least 300 pounds is what I'm looking for, which I feel pretty confident it'll do with 3-inch. And then maybe we'll even uh, we'll do some other studies where we can um, use the findings from this study and see if we can um, lower the weight on it, which, in, you know, with metal, you lower the weight, you lower the cost. So, all right, with that, until next time. See ya.